minutes. We'll be spending just a few minutes walking through the syllabus for uh, this summer school class for it's going to be healthcare ethics. And and again, as you as you go through the uh, information, we'll we'll see through these modules. Sometimes referred to as healthcare ethics, sometimes medical ethics, sometimes clinical ethics. So it just depends on which nomenclature you want to select. But I want to go through this again quickly on this syllabus so everybody's on the same page. And um, I'm Dr. Robert Pelly. I'm going to be your, your instructor for this class. It's going to be an asynchronous class. Um, I, because it's a summer school session, not going to have set office hours, but by all means, reach out, you know, to me through either Gmail or, or you know, through your FISC email, and uh, you can, you know, we'll set up some time and, you know, schedule a Zoom meeting, kind of whatever works for you. Uh, one thing that to remind you this since is is an asynchronous class. Uh, it's it's up to the students, each student to work at their own pace, but you have to have all of the work done. Quizzes, midterm, final, uh, watch and comment on videos. All of that has to be completed by midnight of July the 1st, because I've got to turn your grades in first thing in the morning on July the 2nd. Um, I think the last day of class may be June the 28th, maybe, but um, I'm going to give you that weekend if, you, if you're running a little behind or need some catch-up time or or if you run into if you run into issues along the way, just you know, don't ever hesitate to reach out and touch base with me. We'll try to get something worked out. The class, I believe, starts on May the 28th, so I'm going to try to have everything ready to rock and roll uh, for those individuals in this class. So we you can hit the ground running on May the 28th. And as I said, this is going to be a it's going to be an ethics class, and talk a little about business ethics because. Healthcare is a business. It's a it's a market economy, and a lot of the concepts in business ethics actually transcend to to healthcare. Um, the difference is, um, especially from an ethical perspective, and then just stop and think about it for a few minutes. You go into Starbucks and you get a bad cup of coffee. I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't drink coffee, so. I don't go to Starbucks, but I know a lot of students do. So let's say you go to Starbucks, you get a bad cup of coffee. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you catch it in time, you know, I, I don't know how many people stay there and drink it and eat their muffin or whatever it is again. But if you're, if you're there and you see it's a bad cup of coffee and you complain, then at that point, either from a moral perspective or an ethical perspective, that manager of that franchise should make a decision. They're going to comp you a new cup of coffee, going to, you know, give you a, you know, free muffin. You know, what, what are they going to do to make things right for you, the customer? And that's that happens a lot in business, a, a lot in business just in general. Use cars, you know, just you go on and on. Where it gets a little complicated in healthcare from an ethical perspective is as a patient, I can't, you can't, anybody in this class can't. It's not like you're going to test drive your provider. You select a provider based on information that you're given. You need to find out on the internet, or you, you can go on to your health plan that you're associated with and look at their provider directory and get some information. But until you go in and sit down and talk to whoever your provider is, you're not going to know what kind of quality outcome you're going to get. And, and yes, there is. There, there are some legal recourses in healthcare, but a lot of rec legal recourses are extremely difficult to prove. Um, so it just, again, it's, if, if you get a bad provider, they make a bad decision on your treatment plan and things go south. Uh, it's not the same thing as getting a bad cup of coffee at Starbucks. You're talking about, you know, something that's going could negatively impact your health status. And that could have long run repercussions for you as an individual. So that's what we're going to try to delve into on the ethics of healthcare and and you know why healthcare expenditures are running rampant and and then why some you know a large percentage of those healthcare expenditures are probably redundant. They're probably redundant, they're abusive, they are even billing, you know, even boarding on fraudulent activity. So 
we'll get into all of that and as we go through this. It's it's a summer class, and, and again, as I said, I think starts on May the 28th, and even though supposedly the last class is June the 28th, uh, I'm going to give you to a to midnight on July the 1st to complete everything so I can get those grades turned into the last minute for you. Um, one one thing that 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 I'm going to to spend quite a bit of time in, and the I've, I've adopted a textbook for it for the class. It's the Business Ethics Workshop by James Brousseau. Uh, it's a flat world publication. I really like these flat world publications. They're they're easy for students to understand. They provide some up to date um, examples. They're not if if you've ever had one of my classes and used one of the flat world textbooks. Uh, you, they're they're kind of interesting reads, and and again, this one it's it's a business ethics workshop uh, by James Brousseau, and it, it, it's it's interesting read. Now, from my perspective, I'm not a huge fan of of students having to buy textbooks. I never have been, never will be. I remember how the cost of textbooks impacted my disposable income when I was in school, and so this text it's it's not mandatory that you buy it. And actually, on this text, even though I think it's 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 a pretty good textbook when it comes to you know the basics of business ethics and it delves into some of the issues that are happening in the economy now, um, it's 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 not mandatory. And I'm actually only going to use the first chapter out of it because I'm going to set up business ethics, and then from there on, I'm going to be either. Um, grabbing journal articles off the internet. I'm going to be pulling information off the internet. Uh, and I'm going to be incorporating that into my personal experiences. I've been in healthcare, uh, you know, in administration and, you know, on the management side, mostly with health plans. I'm doing some consulting work now, but uh, mostly with health plans. And, and I bring a lot of good and bad experiences to the table. And we're going to kind of incorporate those as we go along. Uh, as I said, it's it's the classes are asynchronous. Um, starts on May 28th. You've got to have everything done by July the 1st. There's going to be nine modules in the healthcare uh, in this particular session. So I've tried to take what I would normally use in a in a semester. In a, I guess it's a 15 week session and try to condense it down, combine some things. Uh, Usually in a class like this, I would have, you know, 12, 13, 14 modules, but I've tried to combine it down and condense it. We're going to talk about business ethics. We're going to talk about healthcare ethics. We're going to talk about just the economic factors that drive ethical dilemmas and ethical decision-making processes among, and I'll call them the actors, the actors in the healthcare environment, patients, health plans or payers, uh, providers, government entities, especially our policymakers. Uh, and we're going to talk about all that short outcomes together. We're going to talk about some code-driven issues. We're going to talk about billing strategies. So that when we talk about the 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 code-driven issues and in the in the billing strategies, that's where the majority of your waste, abuse, fraudulent activity occurs. And the majority of that activity is going to occur on the provider side. They're the ones that are driving the, the, the lion's share of this waste and abuse and, uh, and fraudulent activities because everybody, you know, the quote that everybody throws out there is, you know, I mean, you know, the pen is mightier than the sword, especially when it comes to the doctor's prescription pen. So that's where we're going to end up there. We're going to talk about life of a claim. We're going to talk about ethical issues, especially from a HIPAA or, uh, you know, patient-based information that can um, end up being hacked or breached. And it's it's a significant issue when you're talking about healthcare goods and services. And then last, we're going to talk about payment integrity. And payment integrity is near and dear to my heart. It's something that I worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield and, you know, before I went into the consulting role. And um, I think it's extremely important that all the students understand that. Um, so far, it looks like we're going to have 100 possible points in the class. It's going to be quiz number one is worth 10 points. Quiz number two is going to be worth 10 points. I'm going to have a midterm. They're going to be sandwiched in around this midterm. It's going to be worth 30 points. And then your final is going to be worth 30 points. So 30, 30, 10, 10, that's going to get you to 80. 
the final 20 points of your class is going to be driven by the videos. And I've got on all of these modules, not only do I have some, some class notes, I may have some documents for you to read, uh, but the main thing is I've recorded these videos and I don't record these videos because I like to hear myself talk. I record the videos to try to help the students in any class that I'm teaching, especially on an asynchronous class, to achieve the maximum grade that they can, to, to maximize their human capital, their skill sets, their understanding of the topic that we're talking about. So it looks like on this class, there's gonna be 41 total videos out there. And I'll, on the end of the, the syllabus, module on this asynchronous class. So if you go out on, you know, Canvas and you know, go to the syllabus, there's going to be an Excel spreadsheet that tells you for each module uh, how many videos there are. And so it'll total down to the bottom of 41. And the expectation is for each individual in the class, they watch the videos, they provide a comment and, you know, just a sentence or two about what you learned or a question you'd like answered or, you know, some, some additional research you'd like to see done. But you have to sign your first and last name to it. And that that is the critical part of it. Some students sign the first and last name at the beginning of the comment, then they write their comments. Some students write the comments and they sign their first and last name at the end. And it doesn't matter where you sign it in that comment, but I have to have your first and last name because the YouTube analytics mechanism will not count those videos as a valid comment unless I can search by your first and last name. So 41 comments. And the way the 20 points are calculated, you get a potential 20 points. And it's not 20 points of extra credit. It's 20 points of your total 100 points on your grade. So it's 20% of your grade. And the way the calculation goes is I take for the numerator, I calculate a ratio. I take the number of comments I can find using your first and last name divided by the total number of videos. So in this case, it's there's 41 total videos. Let's say you watch 20 of the videos and you know comment on 20 of them. Then the ratio at that point is going to be 20 divided by 41. So you're going to get a ratio of about 0.5. That 0.5 then is multiplied by the 20 potential points to get your actual points. So 0.5 times 20 is going to get you 10 points. So you would end up at your final grade with 10 points of the potential 20. And trust me, that these 20 points, they will make or break your grade in this class. I had an individual, I think it was, yeah, maybe it was last summer, uh, took a class with me and this individual was knocking it out of the ballpark, you know, knocking it out of the ballpark when it came to her um, individual quizzes, you know, the midterm, the final, and, I got ready to calculate the final grade and there were no comments. I reached out to this individual and um, and the individual told me that yeah, you know, I'll watch the videos. I just didn't want to have full comments and you know, you know, I'll just take the grade without the comments. So she went from a 98 down to something like a 78. And and I'm thinking, you know, you've gone from an A, and at that point it's gonna be a C plus. I said, you've gone from an A to a C plus, and the individual didn't care. It was a it was a class had to take. It was going to tick mark a box, and they were ready to move on to the next class. And it seems like every semester I've got a sprinkling of a student or two that just absolutely refuses to watch the videos and provide comments. And again, especially these videos for the modules. And and when I give a when I provide you with the quiz, so quiz one or two or the midterm or final. I give you a review video of that. And all students have to do to get a, a reasonably decent grade out of this class is to watch those review videos. Because I'm going to go through most of the information that you need to study for either a quiz or a midterm or a final. So the, the videos, I, I can't stress enough the importance of the videos. And I hope you understand that, that it's going to impact your final grade. Uh, as you kind of scroll down through the the syllabus, and I've got it open here on another computer screen, but 
it's pretty much standard grading. 95 to 100 is an A, 90 to 94 is an A minus, you know, 88 to 89 speed plus, yada, 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 down through there. And then there's also some information on the syllabus, and it's mostly kind of cookie cutter stuff for uh, university, you know, information that they ask you, talking about dropping and adding classes and assistance classes, things like that. Um, and that's going to pretty much wind it up for the syllabus video again. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you know, you can reach out to me through you know your email through you know you know I'm, you can grab me on you know fisk.edu and uh, it's just R. Pelly at fisk.edu and it's and it's actually uh, at the very first of um, of the syllabus it talks about you know how to how to reach out to me. So um, hope you're ready for um, what turns out to be a very informative class. And, and again, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me if you've got a question. Talk to everybody later. Thank you.